got your panning to fill the castings. Do not like that stuff. Paint remover works on your panning a little bit. Eventually it'll take it off. What a pain. Always amazes me how much rust I find under paint. This thing has got a coating of rust all the way around it. This thing's fairly heavy too. It looks small, but it's very thick casting. Hello and welcome. Well, this is part two of the Harding lathe, uh, Harding cataract lathe rebuild. And I've got all the paint stripped off it. Uh, it had a bunch of Japanning on it. If you're not familiar with Japanning, it's a tar-based material, uh, tar with linseed oil, and there's a bunch of different formulas apparently. But it's, uh, they used it to fill in the imperfections in the castings and uh, it is really really difficult to get it off. Paint remover takes it off about 20 coats of paint remover. Uh, it got most of it off about 99 percent. Uh, but now we got to fill the castings because they're they're rough. Uh, I got this product here I don't know if it's any good uh, Got a hardener in it, which is good. We're going to fill the casting with that. But first, we got to fix something that's broken. It's overall in fairly good condition, but there's one broken piece on here. Let me show you what it is. Here's what we got. There's a broken casting right there. And there's a pin that goes in here. And it's worn out. They were using it as a spindle lock. And it, it's meant for indexing, but it's got a series of six holes here. Those are screw holes. The other holes are for indexing. And that pin goes into there. That mounts to the pulley. Anyway, what I'm going to do, there's not much casting right there. It's real thin, but I'm going to ream that out to uh, five, no, seven sixteenths. This is just a little bit under seven sixteenths. And I'm going to make a bushing that's got an inside diameter of 5 16 and then remake that pin. But I'm going to press that bushing in there and then braise it right there, build up some braise to hold that bushing in. Hopefully that brazing will go okay. I'm not very good at brazing, but I, I think that'll be fairly easy to braise.
Yeah, it fits pretty good. And it'd be nice if it was just a hair tighter, but that I think that's tight enough. Okay, I've had this in the oven at 400 for about 30 minutes. Hopefully that'll make it braise a little better. Okay, let's try filling this casting. Two percent hardener. What the heck is that? <laughs> Got this flexible auto body putty knife, if you want to call it that. I didn't think this would be very easy, and guess what? I was right. <laughs> it's already getting thick. It's already drying. Well, that's it. It's dry. Too dry to work with. That's why I found to apply this is with a brush. Well, I'll let that dry for about an hour. Start sanding on it, maybe a little less. I did a little test thing before I did the whole thing, and I think I'll wait about 25 minutes. Uh, Hopefully that'll make it look better. It seemed to work good on the test spot. Hopefully I didn't put it on too thick where I got to sand for hours. Well, that was pretty rough. Not like I thought it would be, actually. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put masking tape on it, and then spray it with gray primer and sand it down again.
That's a nice embossed nameplate. It's going to come out pretty good, I think. That looks pretty good. Uh, now I'll take some uh, strong detergent, clean it out, spray it with lacquer or uh, black paint, and then wipe the surface. Okay, I got it cleaned off with some detergent, the scrub brush. I got the top and bottom edge where it was damaged covered up with tape. I'm hoping to keep the paint out of that those nicks but it may not work. But I'm going to spray it with uh, semi-gloss black. Let that dry for just a second. Probably, oh, a minute or two. And then I got t-shirt material stretched over this block. Probably should have got a bigger piece of t-shirt. Used to be tight on this block. Okay, hopefully this works good. Yeah, I like it. Not perfect, but it doesn't look too bad. Now I'll let that dry, and then I'll coat it with some satin clear finish, and uh, or semi-gloss. Can't remember what it is. It's like a clear acrylic, and it uh, will make that brass stay shiny for a long time and kind of protect that uh, black a little bit. Okay, this pulley here is really made weird. I don't really understand why it's made like this. But there's a piece that inserts into this pulley. And I believe what it is, is so that you can adjust this bearing, which is a thrust bearing that fits right in there. And this piece slides in there, it's supposed to. And you got a set screw right there to to hold it in position to, to adjust your side blade. Well, right now it's about a thickness of that washer from being all the way down. So there's a gap in there and I, I made it so that I can put a washer in that gap. Hopefully this works. Two washers. Make sure you can see that. Yeah. So, I'm going to support this right here. And I made a uh, slug of steel that fits in there pretty good. It's going to sit on those washers. I'm going to take my arbor press and push against those washers, and I hope it'll come apart. We'll see. Not budging. Did not move. Nope. Not not budging. Not not using that method anyway. I may have to heat it up. I hate to do that. It doesn't have to come apart, but if I ever need to adjust the thrust bearings, I wish that it did come apart. Okay, this pulley right here 
is a two-piece pulley and this section right in here is supposed to lift out and I cannot get it out but I don't have to remove it and I may just leave it in there uh, but somebody's damaged it. It looked like they knocked out sections of it and they did it in roughly uh, six spots around their evenly spaced, semi-evenly spaced and uh, well this indexing ring was bolted to here. It looks like it's been bolted several times. Uh, but I think they were using the six hole or six position indexing holes to lock the spindle when they removed the collet. And over, over the years it totally destroyed the ring and, and the pin that you saw previously and the hole that it goes through. Anyway, to avoid that kind of damage and, and provide a place for me to uh, grab this pulley, I'm going to make like a spanner wrench. Kind of like that, that will grab those holes so I can use it to, to grab the spindle and stop it when I'm loosening the collet. And it'll make these look nice. Uh, the thrust bearing sits in there like that. So this, uh, and I guess oil may, may sling out of there if I over oil it, uh, but it, still it'll provide a place that I can make a wrench and use it to hold the spindle. Anyway, I'm using my new DRO to position where I'm going to mill these, I'm going to clean these up with a mill. I got my DRO set up to position these spots. We're going to go through the, that setup. Uh, I'm no expert on this DRO, but it, it is cool the way it works. Okay, to use the hole pattern function on this DRO, you hit that little icon to the whole radio hole pattern there. And it asks you to put it on center, and you, after you find center, you hit enter. And it asks you the diameter. And I've already keyed in the parameters, but the diameter of that is 3.25. That's a total diameter. Then you hit enter. Number of holes, I want six. So you hit enter. Starting angle, that's kind of confusing. Apparently the zero is on the left side. So I want to start at the back hole. That's just happened to be the way I lined up the first slot. The first damage spot is 90 degrees, which is toward the column. So I started at 90, 90 degrees, hit enter. Ending angle. Now that's a weird one. Uh, because I started at 90, normally I would start at 300, but I've got to put in 390. Enter. And then you click down, hole one. All I got to do is put that on zero and we'll be in position for our first, first cut. And there we are, first cut. A little bit nervous about this. Hopefully I've got it clamped down adequately. Uh, the end mill I'm using is slightly dull. I haven't got a sharp one. It's just under three quarter inch, which is, I'm hoping will catch all the damage on each one. I've already been through it one time and it looked like some of them might leave a little bit of the damage, but I think it'll be close enough. So let's get started on that. Probably wouldn't hurt to lock the table. Oh, 
Well, that did all right. Let's go to, go to hole number two. There we go, set on zero. So here's the original one and it's going counterclockwise. That's hole number two, number three, number four, etc. Hole number four. There we go. The last and final notch. There we go. Six even slots. I love it. Well, I got a piece of 3 8 plate here, and this is just slightly under a quarter. And I'm going to make that ring. It's going to be a long, boring process. I'll put this in back gear. Drill me a big, big starting hole. I just thought of something. I gotta open that up. That big. And I'm going to run into my jaws there. So I got to space this plate out away from the jaws. And I need to do it now so that everything stays concentric. Okay, now I've got to surface one side, flip it over, and then cut it to thickness.
Okay, I think this is the final thickness. That's enough, I think. I think after I uh, do a little sanding on it and smoothing, it will be about the exact right thickness. Now I'm going to chamfer the edges like that. Looking too bad. Got some chatter marks in there I need to sand out. Probably good enough. I believe that'll look a little nicer after I get done mounting it. Okay, I'm getting ready to uh, drill all these indexing holes and the mounting holes for this ring I made to attach it to the pulley. And that's what I got to drill right there. There's two, four, six, six holes, uh, 12 total, six indexing holes and six mounting holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill one hole, one of the mounting holes, drill and tap it, and put a screw in it. This is fairly tight on here, but I want to establish the location to the pulley, and then uh, continue to drill all the other holes. Uh, I've got a carbide spotting drill in there and I'm hoping to be able to drill through it. They're not really the best for drilling through stock because they don't have any relief on the sides. But it's fairly thin. I think I can get through that. So I'm going to drill all 12 holes after I mount the ring and then go back and, and thread every other one of them. Okay, let's do it. Okay, now I'm going to change the drill size for 1024. Okay, I'm going to come back and countersink that deeper. I may take it off and do it in the drill press. Uh, this is not the most uh, solid setup, and I don't want to take a chance countersinking on, uh, countersinking on the lathe uh, for fear something will move around. 
So now I'm going to drill all the indexing holes and the screw holes. I'll draw the screw holes first. Okay, now I'm going to go through and drill all the holes that I will index to. And I'm going to drill these into the pulley. Okay, I've drilled all the holes. Now I'm going to go back in the first holes I drilled and drill them with the tap drill and thread them. Okay, now I'm going to take that off, enlarge the holes where the screws are supposed to be, and countersink them. As you can see, this ring has been mounted on there, or the, the old ring, has been mounted on here several times. Well, that pulley's finished. I like it. Thinking about just sanding down the rest of the pulley with wet, dry sandpaper just to make it look nice. See what, that, see what it looks like. Yeah, I think I'll put a little water on the sandpaper and do that.
a cone right there goes into a, a hole in the spindle. Okay, let's see if this thing fits. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Join me next week and we'll work on the cross slide and uh, hopefully get a good start on the turret tail stock. And then after that, we'll uh, build a stand for this thing. Anyway, be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.